we had uh, we're pulling the cabbage patch out in Oregon and uh, fifth gear started slipping so my clutch is going out we're not gonna be able to make it on the rest of the journey not sure if we're gonna even be able to make it back to Salt Lake without fixing it hey you guys thanks for joining us on another journey today we're in Pendleton Oregon at the Pendleton Tours Underground they're the ones that are sponsoring this video if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button if you've been watching every Thursday we greatly appreciate it so sit back relax and enjoy the journey now before we go in the underground I'm gonna ask you all to do an exercise in pretending and some of you are gonna have an easier time with this than others because I'm gonna ask all of you to pretend that you are young men sorry ladies you're about 15 or 16 years old and you've been up in these hills for the last four to six months minute now it's your first trip to town all the guys have told you the things you need to see and do there are buttons on the sidewalk well curiosity gets the best of you you step back and look up what do you suppose is hanging out of those windows there Ladies. exactly <laughs> as we head down the stairs please be careful now we're going to continue this in the underground. There you go, you made it. So come on in, let your eyes adjust. You heard the piano playing. You heard men laughing and bragging. You heard girls giggling. And you found yourself walking through that door. You're the young man looking for a bath. You come in here and you notice the sign here is advertised as baths are 10 cents. You come in here, pop say, I need a bath. And he nods at you and he says, okay. Two cents. Well, any idea why he's only going to charge you two cents instead of the advertised ten cents? The first bath is both hot and clean. Remember, I said there's no indoor plumbing here. Uh, uh, Everything has to be hand filled, so it has to be hand emptied. So he's only going to do that once a day. So every bath um, after the first bath, you subtract one cent from the bath prior. Second bath, nine cents. Third bath, eight cents, and so on. He will take two bucketfuls of dirty water out of those tubs and throw them into the alley. And he's gonna put one clean bucket full of hot water and one clean bucket full of cold water and refresh it. By the time you're at the third or fourth bath, it is neither hot nor is it clean. Because think about this. It has been four to six months since every young man, most of the miners or sheep herders have had a bath prior to you. And you have wagon trains of families moving west, seeking better farmland. We don't have enough labor. The big railroad companies find out that in China, they're in a state of chaos. There are political wars, there are opium wars, a huge famine, and people are dying by the thousands. They were paid as little as five cents a day in a bowl of rice. Many of them didn't survive the first three to six months they were here because they were given the hardest jobs, what they did in many places in the West, and that is retreat into the very undergrounds that they were building. So there would have been more than 70 men living in this small, small space. At this time, these men know that they're never going to see their families again, never see their wives or their children again. They're doing the hardest jobs and the most dangerous jobs. They're not valued as human beings here. And now they're living in this dark, damp, confining space. Were they free men or were they slaves? Well, they were basically indentured servants. Right. So they were slaves, but they yeah. were free. They were slaves They could to, leave or they couldn't leave? Well, they could if they could afford it, but um, they didn't have enough food or money. So did they dig these out underneath the buildings that were? Some of them, it, they would have been dug out once the buildings were already here, but many of them, the basements and the um, tunnels would have been put in first, first or at the same time as oh. they were building. Um, so just like most towns in uh, the world with fire, and fire tends to burn down towns, and Pendleton burnt down. And so when the fa uh, founding fathers decided where they were rebuilding, they were decided bricks, and then they thought, you know, let's go ahead and do the underground at the same time. And so that's basically how it worked, but it, it was over a time span, and so it would have been different for different buildings at different times. Now, there was nowhere you couldn't get in Pendleton through the underground. They went everywhere. And you're gonna get in there nice and tight. So in this room, we also talk about the prohibition. Between 1916 and 1933, the U.S. had a prohibition on alcohol. It said you couldn't make it, you couldn't distribute it, 
and you were not supposed to drink it. Well, Pendleton has always been a little progressive. And we had a prohibition since 1908. With one exception, one week a year, 10 businesses could sell right out here on Main Street. Yeah, Roundup, Mardi Gras of the West. Anybody ever been to Roundup? Oh yeah, born and raised for here. See? Mardi Gras of the West. Before I moved here, I remember I came to Roundup, I remember getting here, and I remember going home, and everything else is pretty blurry. Now this side of Main Street was considered the red light district of Pendleton, and proper ladies would have walked on that side of Main Street. But today, you get to have a little extra fun. So again, I am Judith, and I have been your tour guide today. That's just a teaser taste of Pendleton Underground Tours. I highly suggest coming out this way and taking a tour. It is amazing. We made it to Pendleton, Oregon when we were coming over a couple of the passes on my motorcycle. The uh, fifth gear started slipping and we're trying to figure out how to get it fixed and get back on the road. Got an update for you. We've been to two motorcycle shops trying to get the motorcycle fixed. Uh, obviously because I own a Japanese bike, the Harley guys wouldn't touch it. Just went over to the Suzuki dealership in Pendleton. They don't have the parts. So now we're trying to figure out if we can find a Yamaha dealership to get this thing back on the road. What do you do when your motorcycle breaks down and you're in Pendleton, Oregon? You drink Pendleton whiskey. What are you drinking? Pink and girly, as you would say. Pink and girly. It's the Huckleberry Lemonade. We're in what bar? Uh, fast, fresh, locals, oh my god, burgers and brew. Where's your mom? <laughs> That's your mom. That's your mom. Mm -hmm. Milo's a bad girl. Just joking. Yeah, thank you for coming in. What happened with the uh, African American paratroopers? They actually were chanting at Fort Benning, Georgia. Um, they pretty much were self-taught because they were not allowed to intermingle with the whites. Um, they kind of taught themselves how to do it. How after, to be parachuters. Yes. They watched the white guys do it and they thought, well, we can try this, we'll do it. So at nighttime, when nobody was around, that's what they would do. They were jumping at night. Yeah, they were Without learning. any skills. <laughs> well, they were just jumping off the towers. They, oh, they were okay. learning how to um, Oh, they were jump. doing their own training yeah. at night. They so. basically were doing their own training until one of their commanders went by, saw what they were doing, and you know, said, how do you think you're doing? And they thought, oh, we're doing pretty good. He says, well, let me help you. And so he started working with them. Well, then the base commander saw what was happening, and he called them in. And it was because they had Operation Firefly was what they were working on. So they came here specifically to be trained to jump and be smoke jumpers. They were trained by the U.S. Forest Service. And they were also their own self-contained unit. They had medics, they had cooks, they had um, the, this gentleman that could disarm the bombs. I mean, so they, a full they, infantry group. They basically made their own department. Yes. They came in as the triple nickel, and um, we're about ready to get a marker to signify them. And they were pretty showy type guys. They liked to put on their uniforms and do little parades downtown, and people loved it. They, thought well, it was they cool. had to be class A personalities yeah. jumping out of a plane to begin yes. with. <laughs> Just a quick update. So we decided to wait for the rain in Pendleton. It finally stopped. We jumped on the motorcycle and started heading back towards Boise instead of our original route. And somehow, I don't know why, but fifth gear is not slipping. So, not so far. We're not, not so crazy. far. We're not too far in yet. Yeah. And Wayne went crazy sitting around doing nothing for how many hours was it? Yeah. I went around he for a while. He had ants in his pants. I should have gotten out the camera and filmed that. I just not feeling 100% so I didn't even think of it on some back roads but it's beautiful Elliot, Oregon check out this b-roll I'm a traveling spirit I've seen many shores from the West Pacific to the island of Kenya they treat me like a son anywhere I go so this is ginger our Airbnb our Airbnb dog our beer 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 our beer 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 where are we at April 
We are in Cove, Oregon. It's this giant town in the middle of nowhere that has amazing views. <laughs> <laughs> Freezing cold on the motorcycle in the rain. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, it is beautiful. So this is our Airbnb room tonight. Uh, we're staying with Thomas. And, and Ginger. And Ginger. We just showed you the cool puppy Ginger. And how much did we pay for this room tonight, April? Um, it was less than 50. Less than 50. I think 41 and change. Perfect. I think. What a bargain. Yeah. You always meet cool people in Airbnbs as well. And yeah, it's a little off the beaten path, but uh, it's beautiful. Well, we are out here in the country. Yes, we were on some Awesome dirt Slick roads. Slick ass gravel. <laughs> There's some slick ass gravel on these parts. This is gravelly gravel. I want to thank you guys for watching our video all the way to the end. If you would, hit that subscribe button, share it with a friend, and like always, thank you for living life. I'm a traveling spirit, I've seen many shores From the West Pacific to the island of Kenya They treat me like a son anywhere I go And even though no one can tell, I still feel that I'm